Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds. We're going to give you a fall update. We're going to go through a couple colonies. It's October the 11th. We've got to make sure that our bees are in good shape going into winter. We've been feeding bees. As you can see, there's some pollen patties on the smaller colony. This is a polystyrene box from Blue Sky Bee Supply that they supplied a last season, and the bees have done really well in this equipment. So well, we've had to move several colonies out of it to put in bigger equipment. Um, and I was really tickled to be able to have that interview with Entian um, from the Yukon area. And if you want to watch that, I'll leave that right up here. If you're concerned about insulation or want to know more about it, even if you're in the south, there's a lot to learn from that interview. I've really enjoyed myself. But let's get into this colony and get into a couple more and see how they're looking. And I'll tell you what I think that they need to go through a winter. As you can see, we got some patties. The fall flow has not been great. It's been really surprising because we had such good summer rains. The weeds, weeds that are great for bees were big and strong, but during the main period of flow, the only thing I can figure, and I've talked to a couple other professional beekeepers and seasoned beekeepers, and the only thing we can come to the conclusion is that we had a really strong cold spell, and it did rain for a while during the peak flow too. We got a lot of days of rain, but I think it was the cool weather. Nectar just doesn't secrete good at those cooler temperatures. And that's a really big disappointment. Now you can see there's a little bit of nectar maybe down in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's getting late, but that is actually feed. We've been feeding colonies because there is no fall honey to speak of at all. And you can see the pollen patty to supplement the, the pollen. We need these colonies nice and healthy. We want lots of winter bees. And so let's see what we're looking at. This one's got a lot more weight to it than that edge frame. All right, so we've got a little bit of brood on this side. And we've got some nectar or sugar syrup, I should probably say, around it. And got some good brood right up in there. Not a huge pattern. The bees are gearing down a little bit. We'll see how this compares to the bigger colonies when it ex uh, inspect in just a minute. And they are consuming that patty a decent bit. All right. You have to be careful. A lot of small hive beetles this time of the year, so you don't want to give them too much. We've got a, a little bit of a brood pattern right down in there. There's a little bit of pollen. They definitely don't have enough foodstuffs to go through winter, but we still have some time to put on some weight. Mm -hmm. This colony isn't big, but with the insulated hive, I, I feel like with a little bit of feed, we're going to give them probably a half a gallon here this week. And we'll just trickle it in along. And we definitely need to make sure by November we start feeding really hard here in Tennessee. If you're further north and you need to be more active and more serious but you have to be watching it down here too all right there's a better frame of brood right there that smoke is just uh, coming right in my face and choking me out all right so that looks pretty good right there there's brood on the adjacent frame there's not a lot of food stores it's just mind-blowing how um, little fall flow there was this year. I mean, I'm looking into some big colonies that we didn't get around to feeding, and they are so dry. I should have fed them earlier. But you, you kind of hope and expect the fall flow to contribute, and it did not. I think they lost weight during the fall flow. So that's, that's pretty insane. This colony is in good shape. It's not huge. Um, but with this little bit of supplemental feeding, I think that they'll overwinter just fine. And this is as small as I would like to see a colony going into winter. You can overwinter a little smaller than this, but I, I don't really like to. The insulation will help quite a bit. Make sure you check out that interview with uh, Mr. Uh, Tardif and uh, check that out. Let's go to another colony. So this colony right here, I want to go through it and show it to you. We drew a lot of combs with it. We produced over 140 pounds of honey with this colony. It's been great all year. It's had a great queen, dead mites, good nutrition, and we're supplementing some of the poor nutrition that's been coming in from nature. They've got this top box about 
three or four frames worth of feed. I've got a two gallon bucket feeder on top. We're starting to use two to one on colonies that are really light. And up to this point we've been using one to one just to keep the bees stimulated going forward. The clusters are starting to shrink the bees you know, mid-October, they're not wanting to raise as much brood, that's very normal. They are raising brood, and definitely the bigger ones are raising more than the, the little ones for sure. You can see that we have this pollen patty in here, it's been in here for a couple days. They're consuming it pretty well. And let's just go down in here and check and see what we have. We've thrown a couple patties in here just to try to supplement this poor fall forage. It is, it is getting late. These bees are like, this is not inspection hour, buddy. Well, here we go. This frame's got a lot of weight to it. And we could reduce this colony down to one box, and we may do so. There's a lot of food weight right in here. We have a little bit of brood. The main reason I wanted that top box though is so they can put some of that food up top and it leaves that queen with plenty of room to lay. Lots of just food and there's bee bread in here as well, but mostly sugar syrup in this edge frame. They're just, they're prepping for winter, you can just tell. I like to see a, a good frame or two of brood though. And these are carnies, so they're a little bit more prone to to shut down but that's that's good right there let me pull this one on up excuse me that's a whole lot better right there oh there's the queen down towards the bottom bottom uh, right to you guys she's looking really good that's a good pattern for this time of the year I'm seeing a lot of fuzzy bees those are probably gonna overwinter and we've got, you know, some a bit of brood on this side. All right. We are going to stick that right there. Let's just check one more frame, see how they're doing. This is what I want to see this time of the year. Um, if I had Italians, it'd be a little bit different, but it really just depends on your type of bee. I, I don't have to have giant clusters, and they won't go into winter quite this large. I'd say they're going to shrink down to about... Oh, eight frames in cluster size, eight or nine frames, that's fine. I just want them healthy, that's the main thing. And that's going to give us a lot of nice bees going into winter right there. A lot of nutrition. We have brood. I see some bee bread in there. That's good. We're just trying to keep them bolstered up. Look at that nice pattern right there. That's what we're going for. All right, let's go on to the next colony. So we're to our last hive, and I wanted to mention something I forgot to about the other hives. Is that the first one I would like to see in that polystyrene hive, about the equivalent of four frames of food. But we have plenty of time, especially in a polystyrene hive here in Tennessee. I can feed that thing in well into November and they have some food in there the trick with little colonies like that or working singles that are really strong is if you feed them too strong too early then the queen doesn't have enough room to lay and so you don't get as big of a cluster as you would like the flip side is if they get a little short on food then they'll cut back on the nutrition that they feed to the larvae and they also won't lay as much and then you get lower quality less healthy bees going into winter and less quantity of winter bees. So it really is kind of a tight rope walk and I think that's why on that second colony, that larger one I just did, I have that deep box on top. It was just empty drawn combs. I've been feeding them, feeding them, and about four of those frames up top are full of food so they're getting stimulated. They have resources. If I want to condense that all the way down into a single, I can just take those frames of food drop those down. On a big colony like that, and a big colony like this one right here, I want to see nine capped frames or equivalent of that. So maybe you have seven capped frames and then you have a couple uh, 
that are kind of half full, something like that. You definitely want to have plenty of food, and if you have a little too much, you can always, well at least I always can find colonies that are a little bit light to give it to. And I promise you we do that every year. Come around February, you look at some colonies like, oh my goodness, they're not going to need to use all those frames. Take a frame or two out of those, give it to one that needs it. It's the best way to feed bees right there. At least in Tennessee. So we're going to pop into a couple spots in this hive right here. And golly, this queen is just exceptional. I think a lot of it has to do with how young she is. And you can just see the nutrition in here. That's part of the reason why it's so good. We just have this nice capped honey layer right here. We have a little bit of bee bread you can see in a ring. And there's some underneath this capped honey where they'll put a capped layer over that and they'll help mm -hmm. preserve it a little bit better. This colony is just everything I'd want to see right here. It's definitely um, on, on the high end of, of what we see often. The, the last colony that we we showed you that's typical this is this is doing even better than that so I'm just gonna stick this frame down and I'm seeing brood there I imagine we're gonna see food over here so let's check over here a little bit and let's check this edge and see what we're looking at stores wise so this is really a light over here and that's probably because it's so far away from the feeder that's a long way to to move food that's completely empty this is something that uh, you know you want to watch out for um, if for example you have nine frames full of food I probably would start the bees over on this side with the food that they have like this right here and they have it above the brood and then they can just gravitate toward the food stores that they need it and it's all in one direction um, you guys can weigh in on what you think but I think that's what I'm going to do is put the brood frames and that's kind of what I've done all season is keep the the brood over here and then all the honey production and all the winter food is going to be over here and they can just move all in one direction and that won't be a problem I don't see why that won't work, especially since the hive is insulated, which helps them a little bit move around. And we also are in a very mild area, so that's not a big concern. Now this frame right here is much more full. You can see all this capped goodness right here. And you can see a lot of this feed in here. Granted, we have been feeding them quite a bit. I would say since we pulled the honey back in July, I believe that was, We've probably fed this colony five or six gallons of one-to-one. -one. Uh, I'd say maybe six to seven. It's been quite a bit. And we did not take all of their honey away from them. It's really important. If you take too much honey, it really stunts the bees if you don't feed a lot quick. There's a lot of food right in here. This is going to be great. And if we keep feeding, they'll cap this completely on both sides. And... I think we're just starting to get into some brood right there. So we probably have about five, five frames of brood or so in here, which is quite good. Maybe, maybe six frames. And let's go over into here. Of course, I've been feeding with this frame feeder, so I'm curious to see, are they taking the feed and they're putting it all over here around the brood nest? Or are they putting some out towards here yet? And a lot, that will determine how much I start feeding them. So this is semi-light. I'd say that's not even a quarter full. Yeah, there is some in there, but it's not a lot. And this looks very light as well. They're, they're hauling it all over here around that brood nest. They're packing it in for winter. This is heavier. Whoops, not as heavy now. There's a little bit of brood in that. What? There's a little brood over here too. Wow, queen's been moving around looking for a spot to lay. This colony needs some more winter food. I'm gonna say, looking at what I'm seeing now, two to one ratio, uh, four gallons. 
Does it need that to survive? Maybe not. But when they start brooding up in February, we want them to know that we can lay to our heart's content and we're not going to run out of food. When they start brooding up, they use a lot of energy. Good bit of bee bread up in there. And I really believe if we had not fed them so much sugar syrup that they would be not looking anywhere close to this. Some people are like, well, why don't you just leave them their honey? Well, we could have done that. They'd probably look this good too. We wouldn't have made anything off of this colony. And uh, it's hard to run a business and keep this many hives of bees if the beekeeper's uh, children are hungry all the time. And they're like, Daddy, please go get a job. <laughs> this is really full of food. So it's looking good. This definitely needs some food. Four gallons of two to one, maybe five gallons two to one, and pack it in here real nice. I want 60 pounds in here of, of honey. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions on what we're doing or suggestions, leave it below. This will be my first time overwintering a horizontal hive. I have high hopes for this colony. It looks ideal. And this added nutrition right here, I hope to just keep encouraging as much brood growth as we can. Thanks for watching this video, and it's about time to go inside. It's getting dark. We'll see you in the next one.